Uh, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Obviously, as it states, Jesus and the apostles depart from the temple. This is, of course, subsequent to Christ entering the temple, Matthew 20, chapter 21, verse 23. We go through there all the way through to the end of chapter 23. He never shows them leaving the temple. This discourse on the Mount of Olives is supplemental to what was discussed in the temple. Uh, could you put up verse 2, Frank? I have most of this in my head, but... And Jesus, uh, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one stone left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. This is in relation to the buildings of the temple. This temple that they had just walked out of, where he had just given his speech to the scribes, Pharisees, and chief priests, we know that this temple has been destroyed. It was destroyed in 70 AD. Uh, next verse, Frank, I think is where the information really starts. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Of course, this is due to Bible translation. The word coming here comes from the Strong's word, parousia, parousia, however you pronounce that. This word is defined in Strong's, in fairs, in vines as presence, not a coming, but presence of the end of the world. This again, due to translation issues, is not the word world, should be the word age. This is based on the Greek word aeon. Aeon is defined with several possible definitions, most of those relating to father, birth, nativity, all men, all group of all people living at the same time, genealogy could be, depending on how it, the verses or the word is used in which verse. But when you go through and you look at these, I think it's fairly simple. Again, this would depend upon the translation that people are using. Parousia is presence. Aeon is age. The disciples were not asking him, what will be the sign of your coming? They were asking, what will be the sign of your presence? They were not asking about the end of the world, but they were asking about the end of the age. And if you want to take it from here, Vince, I want to move too fast. Yeah, I can see any kind of argument against uh, or any difference between his interpretation of the first verse. Uh, let's start here in verse 2. And it's the conjunction dead. It's the different conjunction than we had in the first one, which would be Kai. It could be adversative, as in yet. Jesus, who is uh, nominative in this place, he is the subject. And he said unto them, that is, he said... Unto them would be dative, so would have to refer to the disciples. And then there's a rhetorical question, it's interrogative. The subject is implied by the mood and the sensory verb. Sensory verb is see ye, present active imperfect verb, which implies uh, the ye. The ye is eclectic there, not particle. All, which would be panta, it's accusative, it's a plural neuter, so it would be all these things, which would be the demonstrative pronoun, which would name the direct object in the accusative case. So we know all being accusative, and these things also being accusative case, and the neuter plural of the word autos, in this case it's tauta, we know that all these things must refer to what was already being spoken of. And he says verily, which was, it's the Particle indeclinable, which is amen, it's a transliteration of the Hebrew, verily I, which is an implied elliptical subject when he says verily, and then say, that is I, who is Jesus, 
say is Lego. It's a present active indicative, so he's basically saying, I am saying unto you presently. Unto you is also the indirect object. It's in the dative case. It's plural, so it must refer to the disciples who he's talking to. There, which is explicative, that's just a word added in for translators, just to get the um, sentence going. There shall not. It's actually two words, two two particles that are combined again to make a very emphatic negation. Basically, in no wise, it's the strongest negation you can give. Be left. This is introduces a passive subjunctive uh, phrase here. Here, it's an adverb. One stone, which is masculine noun. It's a word bent upon. It's your preposition, one stone acts upon another stone, literally it's the same word, uh, lithos, so it's literally stone upon stone, that will not, the monster pronoun is a specific, shall not, again, the strong negation, o me, shall not be thrown down, and then the kata, uh, there's, it actually forms two different words together, so it intensifies the verb to indicate a total demolition. And if I may go on to verse 3, um, I agree generally with what Jerry has to say. There's probably just a, a few things I need to point out um, that I may have a different opinion on. Uh, disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? Uh, these things, these things. It's going to be the subject, it's nominative, it's a demonstrative pronoun, it's a neuter plural, so it must refer to verse 2, which we've already established. Jerry has also made that point. And Jesus goes on to say, or actually they go on to say with a, a second part of that question, they use a conjunction chi, the symbol connective, what... It's your interrogative pronoun used objectively. It shows emphasis on the word sign in the direct question, not on age or world or the coming. The, the focus is not on the coming or when the world or the age would end, but the emphasis, since it's used adjectively, it's on the sign. So the question is about the sign. And then shall be, indicative future middle, copula, it's just added in for our translation. The, it's a nominative singular neuter definite article, so there's a specific sign that is named here. The sign is in the nominative case, so it's the subject of the sentence. And then everything after that is genitive, so everything after is going to, you know, whether it be a prepositional phrase, it's going to, it's going to modify the sign. So the sign's the subject, of is in the genitive, thy, it's a uh, genitive singular, so it's talking about who, Jesus, who's coming. Uh, the coming is a present participle, it's a verbal, it acts like an adjective. So it actually is describing what? The subject, which is the sign. So when's the sign going to come? And the sign of the end of the world. So the next Conjunction, it's a coordinate, it's coordinating conjunction, which means it distributes equally both these clauses to modify this word sign. And of the, of the is also genitive singular feminine, so it also modifies the, uh, the sign also modifies the N. So the N has to do with something that's named by a sign. And that's, that's where our first disagreement is. Uh, my first disagreement with Jerry is his focus is on this is a question about the coming and the end of the age. It's about the sign, and the sign is qualified in such a specific way. Now, whether Jesus answers them differently and he talks about the coming and the end of the age, even though they asked about the sign, we'll deal with that as we go on through the next through the text. Um, also, just one quick thing to point out, it's not even really the parousia uh, in the Texas Receptus, it's actually uh, par parousias, and for age, it's ionos. So these are all genitives, so it actually changes the word. 
And another case where Jerry has... Okay, time's up, and I'm going to go ahead and yield it. Um, well, I'm not sure where that is defined as Aeonios. Uh, everything that I've looked into is just Aeon. It's age. Um, and again, we're looking at what is the sign of his presence. End of the end of the age. I uh, don't really know where to go to from there unless you wanted to continue or we could move on with the rest of the verses, but I have nothing else to add on that verse there. I would like you to point out to the sign. What is the sign? I think that's an important issue right there. What is that sign? Tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming. So let's focus on the, the, the uh, subject, which is the sign. Uh, he says the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. So what would that sign be? And uh, Vince, you can come up since Jerry uh, relinquished that uh, there. Uh, you come up and I want to hear uh, your uh, view on what would be the sign of the coming. What, what is the sign that uh, he's pointing us to? And then Jerry can come up. Thank you. I'll actually save that for um, probably verse 30. And I'll go ahead and yield the mic if uh, Jerry wants to go ahead and continue in verse 4 or anywhere else. 